Hey you guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing one of our first form Latin lessons. So I thought I'd show you what they look like and how they are structured. So if you have considered adding Latin to your homeschool curriculum, this would be a great video to watch. Typically, I use this curriculum to teach Latin at our homeschool co-op, but my little one had a fever yesterday, so we stayed home today. We have been using uh, Memoria Press Latin curriculum for a few years now. We actually started with Prima Latina, and then we did Latina Christiana, and now we are almost done with first form Latin. Before we get started, I wanted to just share a brief intro to why we are even learning Latin to begin with. When we first began looking into the option of homeschooling, I remember visiting a local classical conversations session and I sat in on a class where students recited a long list of Latin declensions and conjugations and I was intrigued. I had never thought of Latin as something that I would teach in our homeschool, nor did I see the value. As I became more familiar with homeschooling methods and browsed my fair share of curriculum and homeschool conventions, I saw that Latin was quite popular among homeschoolers. Being pretty ignorant of Latin myself, I wanted to know why should I consider teaching my kids this dead language? So I began teaching Prima Latina in our homeschool co-op kind of blindly. I Figured it might give me a few extra cool homeschool mom points. I'm only halfway joking. One of the things that we did in that class was memorize the Sanctus Latin prayer. In Latin, Sanctus means holy. Shortly after, my son was learning John 17, 17 in his Awana class. And that verse says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. And he surprised me when he recognized that sanctify was a derivative of sanctus. And he understood that the verse was talking about being made holy. And so I started to see the value more and more in what we were learning in those early days. As we work through our lessons each week, my kids have to think through different word endings and grammar forms, and they have to apply rules with precision and really pay attention to detail. I don't think I realized at first just how much our grammar is based on Latin grammar. And as we've been learning Latin, my kids and I understand more why we have certain grammar rules and our Latin lessons have reinforced what we are learning in our English classes. Plus, the Sanctus example that I just mentioned is just one of many Latin derivatives we've encountered since we began our studies. So many of our English words come from Latin and it's been really fun to see the vocabulary connections my kids can now make. And since so many of the Romance languages like French and Spanish have descended from Latin, learning Latin can make it easier for my kids to learn other languages later on if they want to. Finally, I think learning Latin is Fun. We have a great time in our Latin co-op class each week and working through translations at home is kind of like figuring out secret codes and messages. Plus, once my kids learn that many Harry Potter spells are derivatives of Latin words, they loved it even more. I have been really happy with the Memoria Press Latin curriculum and I think it's a great curriculum to start with if you are wanting to teach Latin in your homeschool. There are two Latin for beginners options from Memoria Press. Like I mentioned, um, the first is Prima Latina and then you also have Latina Christiana. Both of them are good for beginners. Prima Latina is kind of a more gentle introduction geared for kids anywhere from about first to fourth grade that you know teaches a great mix of English grammar and beginning Latin. There is less vocab to memorize each week in this course. So if your kids are still in the beginning stages of English grammar, this would probably be the one you'd want to start with. I first started teaching Latin in our homeschool co-op when my son was in third grade using Prima Latina, um, which is the level right before Latina Christiana. When my girls started Latin, I wanted them to be at the same level as my son just to make it easier. So when they were in third grade, I simply had them begin at Latina Christiana and we skipped Prima with them. And that has been a good choice. With Latina Christiana, this is still being a beginner Latin course, so I don't feel that they were at any disadvantage not completing Prima first. The biggest difference was more vocabulary and grammar forms to memorize in this one, so just keep that in mind. The Memoria Press Latin courses were created by a homeschooling mom who realized the advantages of learning Latin early on. They all come with either DVD or streaming lessons. So at first you could just get the DVDs, but now they have streaming options. So you could use these to teach if you want to, but I use them really for prep and teaching each week. Since I'm teaching this in a co-op, I will watch the lessons myself so I get a feel for the pronunciations and what I need to cover. But you could simply have your kids watch the lessons
lessons at home if you aren't using this in a co-op setting. I did not know Latin myself, but as with other things in homeschooling, it's been so much fun to learn alongside my kids. The teacher manuals are super easy to follow and they're scripted, so you really just follow the steps in order and you are good to go. Okay, so now that I've shared a little bit about why we use this and why we're loving it, let me give you a look at what an actual lesson looks like. It will look a little bit different than usual for us since we're at home and I'm not in front of a classroom. We'll just be sitting around our kitchen table, but hopefully this will give you an idea of the lesson length and flow. Okay, you guys ready? This will be this will be different doing it on our own, right? Okay, first, we have to do, so GK. Yeah! Oh, GK. Oh, GK. Oh, GK. I'm so you. You did it. Good job. Good job. Oh, so GK. Outstanding. Okay, in Coral, K moves. Personal and tense endings. O. O, S, T, moves, T, S, N. Bam, bas, bat, bamus, batis, bant, bo, bis, bit, imus, bitis, bant, e, isti, it, imus, istis, errant, eram, eras, erat, eramus, eratis, errant, ero, eris, erit, erimus, eritis, errant. Good job. Okay, first conjugation principle part endings. O, o, are, avi, atus. A mo principal part endings. A mo, amare, amavi, amatus. Okay, a mo, six tenses. A mo, amas, amat, amamus, amatis, amant. Amabam, amabas, amabat, amabamus, amabatis, amabant. Amabo, amabis, amabit, amabimus, amabitis, amabant. Amavi, amavisti, amavit, amavimus, amavistis, amaverant. Amavaram, Amavaras, Amavarat, Amavaramus, Amavaratis, Amavarant, and Amavaro, Amavaris, Amavarit, Amavarimus, Amavaritis, Amavarit. I can't say that. Good job, you trace that Q. Do you remember what Q says? So, Mom, I think he's like doing really carefully. Good job. Not um the the this. Yes. Well, wait, 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 hold, no, hold, you gotta show me how you hold it the right way, though. That would be the other way, it was the but, right way. But, Mom. What? I did this smoothly, and then I, I almost did it. Good job. Can you show me how you hold your, your crayon the right way? Perfect. Good job, buddy. Flip. I love it. Yep, flip it over. Good job. Good job. All right, how about you trace? Did you trace those already? You did. Good job. All right, this, is the, paint. this is the paper that you can paint. Do you remember what the cue says? Quack, 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 quack. We're gonna paint some quails right here, okay? What's a quail? A quail is a type of bird. Okay, we'll count those in just a minute. Okay, you guys, uh, back to our station. So we've got do, sto, uvo, and lavo principal parts, okay? Wait, what? So do, dare. Uh, do, dare, dedi, datus. Sto, stare, steady, status. Uvo, uvare, ubi, yutus. And lava, lavare, lavi, latus. Okay. Sum principal parts. Sum, esi, dui, futuris. Sum in the six tenses. So you have sum, es, es, sumus, esi, sum. Eram, eras, erat, eramus, eratis, erant. Ero, eris, erit, erimus, eritis, erant. Fui, fuisti, fuit, fuimus, fuistis, fuerant. Fuaram, fuaras, fuarat, fuaramus, fuaratis, fuarant. Fuaro, fuaris, fuarit, fuarimus, fuaritis, fuarant. Good. And case names. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative. Mensa, mense. Mensa, mense, mense, mensa, mensa, mense, mensara, mensis, mensas, mensis. Servu, servi. Servus, servi, servo, servum, servo, servi, servorum, servi, servo, servis. Bellum, belli. Bellum, belli, bello, bellum, bella, bella, bellorum, bellis, bella, bellis. Good. So we're going to do our cardinal numbers. So unus, duo. Unos, duo, tres, quator, quinque, six, septum, octo, onovem, decem. Okay, those are hard for me for some reason. And then the ordinal numbers, primus secundus. 
Primus, Secundus, Tertius, Quartius, Quintus, Secretus, Septimus, Octavus, Nonus, Decimus. Something good, buddy. Okay, ready, guys? We're almost done. Pater, Patris. Pater, Patris, Patri, Patrem, Patre, Patres, Patrium, Patribus, Patres, Patribus. Okay, two more to go. All right, so we've got Nomen, Nominus. This one is so hard for me, so we'll do it a little bit slowly, okay? We've got Nomen, Nominus, Nomini, Nomen, Nomine, Nomina, Nominu, Nominibus, Nomina, Nominibus. I have to work on memorizing that. And then the one we did last week, Portus, Portus. Ready? Portus, Portu, Port. Wait. Okay, ready? Portus, Portus, Portui, Portum, Portu. Portus, Portuum, Portibus, Portus, Portibus. Okay, um, good job. Let's see that again. Oh, we should, let's count these in Latin. We're going to count these in Latin. It says to count them. You wanna, we're going to count them for you in Latin, okay? Ready? So we've got Unus, Duo, Tres, Quator, Quinque, Six, Septem, Octo. There's eight of them. <laughs> and pop toe, that's not a lot. <laughs> okay, so you guys, that is uh, Sudete. You sit down, Sudete. I already said. What next? Okay, so that is our recitation. Um, Oliver, you know what? I'm going to do the puzzle while we're working. Okay, let me get some scissors. All right, you guys open up your books to lesson 26. What is what is that Latin saying on there, you guys? You guys, can you read that? <laughs> Close. Have, any, can, I, can anyone pronounce that? Carpe. Okay, how do we pronounce that I in Latin, though? It's like an E. So carpe diem, which is seize the day. I've have you, heard of it. I know, you guys have heard it before. It's pretty. It's almost like a table. <laughs> it is a pretty famous saying, carpe diem. All right, so every week we have our Latin oh saying. God. Oh my goodness. Here we go. I've never heard it. Yeah, it is more feminine than masculine today. Okay, there are. That's actually going to be true of the next uh -huh. convention now. So. Uh -huh. Carpe diem, Luke, can you, hey guys, can Luke, will you read what it says about Carpe diem right there in your book while I'm cutting this out, please? From one of Horus, Otis. From one of, from one of, I know that was hard. From one of Horus's odes. So it's an ode, like a, I guess it's a poem. Okay, so continue. Sorry. Carpe diem. 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 <laughs> <laughs> interpreted to mean make the most of today. Take hold of the day and use it well. For tomorrow is not promised to you. Today is all you have. Okay, so that's some pretty good advice there, right? Carpe diem, seize the day, right? Tomorrow is not. It's the advantage of the day. Tomorrow is not promised to us. So it basically just means make the most of every day. Um, seize the day, make the best of it. We are not promised tomorrow. So that's carpe diem, okay? Can you guys say that after me? Carpe diem. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. Okay, so Oliver, here's four pieces. Do you think you can put this together in that frame to make a puzzle? What do you think? All right, carpe diem, seize the day. Yeah. Okay, I have some grammar questions for you guys. So oh, no. let's see how much you remember from last class. No. The, the last class we talked about the fourth declension nouns. Those usually end in what nominative singular case ending? So what two letters? What, what is the ending for our fourth declension nouns? Us. Us, right? So you ask. Like us. Us. Okay, so well, in the genitive singular, but in the nominative singular, there's no math wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I should get them because we do them for Latin. How do you know? What are they? They are in my office in my bag. I usually give up candy when we're in co-op class. So, did you find where that's going to go? She's in my jacket. Perfect. She's in the side of class. Which piece do you think is going to go there? Wait, this one. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's see. Okay. Like this? Are you doing a like this one? No, this yeah, is a second half. I answered the question. Wing, wing. Yay! Okay. Like this? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah.
Yes, now see if you can map, before you glue them down, see if you can yeah, match where these go. Where will those go? And then we'll glue them down. What do you think? Actually, see if you can put them on here where they fit, and then we'll glue them down. This one! Guys, can you pick them up and put them on the puzzle? That one? We'll pick it up. Here, put the glue down for a second. Yeah, show me. Show me. Put it on here before we glue it. Show me. Can you do this? Okay, so fourth declension ends in use. Good yeah. job, that's it. Yeah, yeah totally. that I window. said that too. You did it, what? high five. I did. That's it, good job. All right, now, you, now let's glue, now that we know where they're gonna go. Okay, what gender do fourth declension, what, do, what gender are the fourth declension nouns usually? Yes. Masculine? Fourth declension nouns are usually masculine. However, there are two exceptions to that. Tell me, if, without looking, no, 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 you only get candy if you can tell me without looking. What are the two nouns that, I know this is a hard one, what are the two nouns that are exceptions to that? So they're in the Dominus. fourth declension, they're in the fourth declension, but they're not masculine. Dominus. Close, domus, which means what? That's what I meant. Domus, home. house, house, oh. home. And what about the other one? You remember? <laughs> okay, so domus, and remember we talked about hand, right? Hand is manus, 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 okay? Are you one? No. He actually... He did answer one. There you go. Okay. All right. There you go. <laughs> Okay, guys. <laughs> in the fourth declension, there were four case endings ending in oops. What were they? So, Wait, the, what? so in the fourth declension, four of the different endings had oops endings. So one of them, I'll start you off, one of them was the nominative singular. I don't, I don't, okay. Please, please, Tell me one of them. Accusative? The accusative, um, was it singular or plural? Singular. No plural. I know two. Okay, accused, so nominative singular. This is not a, 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 a candy question. So, Rudy, tell me what. I got it. Listen, I'm going to have to put this away if you get to focus. So, nominative singular, accusative plural. What's one? Genitive singular. The genitive singular, and then Carly, do you remember the last one? The oh, 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 I know. It's the <laughs> kid. It's the nominative plural. Nominative plural. Wait, that's so upset. nominative singular and plural is one of them just has a macron, but it's it's still <laughs> just don't glue it down, okay? Okay. Okay, let's see. How can you distinguish between the fourth declension and the second declension and the second declension since they both have an oos ending in the nominative singular? What should you always look at when you're trying to decide the declension of a noun? What ending do you look at? The uh, genitive singular. Good, the genitive singular ending. So we look at that. And then what is the genitive singular ending? Think back to our second declension. What did the second declension masculine have as its genitive singular ending? E. E, or the letter I, right? But E. Okay, so in the fourth declension, what is the genitive singular ending? In the fourth declension that we just learned, what is the genitive singular ending? Yes. Us. With, with the macaron, okay? But that's pronounced us. Okay, here is, I have one more question. How do you find the stem for a fourth declension noun? Wait, what? How do you find the stem for a fourth declension noun? Yes. You drop the ending. Which ending? Like the oops. From what? You drop the ending, the oops ending from what case? Nominative. Nominative. Genitive. 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 Um, we did our Latin saying. Latin saying was carpe diem. Um, okay, Oliver, do me a favor. Will you take that either downstairs or in the living room while we finish this up? Okay, and then we'll, yep, we will finish that up once I get through Latin. We'll be done in like 10 minutes, okay? Thank you, kiddo. All right, you guys. So when you guys look at that fifth declension on page, is everyone on page 66? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Okay. N67. Okay. So look at, this is also the shortest stem that we are going to have. What is the stem for our fifth declension? What does it say? R. R. It's R. So that's the shortest R. stem that we're going to have. Okay. The, the model noun, listen, the model, it's just R. The model noun is going to be race. That's the model noun that we're going to use to illustrate the declension. Do you guys see your vocabulary down there? Yes. What does race mean? Luke? Oh, you have to figure it Carly? I don't know. Thing, Thing, matter, affair, and business. Okay, so a lot of things. That's what race means. That's going to be our model noun. Wait, where, okay? where do you see Real that? Real is our derivative for that, okay? Mm -hmm. Down at the bottom in your vocab list. Can I get a drink? Yeah, just listen while you do that. I don't see it. Uh, race, R, E, S. Oh. Okay, so all nouns, if you guys look at that chart and we look at the genitive singular ending, my genitive singular ending is A. So it's E I, which we pronounce A E. Okay, so all nouns whose genitive singular end in A E belong to the fifth declension. So to find the stem in our fifth declension, we're going to draw to the genitive singular ending A E. Okay, so I want you guys to just look at the chart. I'm going to read it first while you listen and then you'll recite it after me, okay? So, for our fifth declension, we have race, rei, rei, rem, re, race, re room, re boost, race, re boost. Yeah, re room. That it makes me like think of Scooby Doo. Like I feel like it's something Scooby Doo is doing. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, race, rei, rei, rem, re, race, re room, re boost, race, re boost. So you guys can look. I want you to say it along with me, okay? Let's just get it on our tongues and get used to saying it. Here we go. Race, ray, ray, ram, ray, race, ray room, ray boost, race, ray boost. I forgot the ray room had an extra R. I know, you want to say like ray room almost. Right? Yeah. Okay, now we're just going to say the ending. So that's our model now with the endings. Listen first and you try with me. Ace, A E A E M A. Ace, A room, A boost, Ace, A boost. Huh? Ready? Try with me. Ace, A, E, A, M, A, Ace, Arum, Abus, Ace, Abus, Abus. Should be Abus. Did I say Abus? You said Abus. You said Abus. 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 Arum, Abus, Ace, Abus. Okay, let's try it one more time. Ace, Ace, A, E, M, A, Ace, Arum, Abus, Ace, Abus. Doesn't the third and fourth question have an so we have blank E C M A. Yes. So well in the ablative singular, yeah. right? I so we do. Yep. Ace and it also has an ace. Um, blank is E M A Ace. Okay, now why am I blanking? It's ace. Now you got me thinking. Um, blank is E M A Ace Oom. That's it. Ace Oom E boost Ace E boost. So it does have some similarities. That's why there's lots of kind of similarities between the declensions, which kind of can make them easier to memorize. So this is the last declension you're going to have to memorize, and probably the last thing we add to our recitation, which is really good. Okay, so we're going to memorize those this week. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the vocabulary. What are you doing? Uh huh. Um, okay. Vocab at the bottom. So we only have five vocab words. So just mm -hmm. listen as I as I read them out to you. We've got deis, dei masculine, day, facies, facie, facie, feminine, face, that is, so E-A-E, -E. so you've got to say all those vowels, facie, for face, facie, I know, I guess, that's like a tongue twister, facie, yes, <laughs> fides, fidei, feminine, faith, trust, Race, rei, feminine, thing, matter, affair, or business. Space, spei, feminine, hope. Here was your question. Why is your dot that for each like um, gender except this one right here? Oh, typo. Do you want me to write to the company? It's got it. Tell them. You don't need to. So, <laughs> when did we ever do vocab practice? Not vocab, but like, yeah, vocab practice. Um, what well, do we have? Come no. on. Do we have to say all? This thing's matter, matter, fair, business. business. Yes. It's like, yeah. you can do it. Can you not say thing? No, because it could be.
could be, yeah, it could be. Oh, man, I'm going to get confused in all of them. Okay, let's, you, I want you guys to recite the vocab with me, okay? So remember, we're going to say the word, we're going to say the gender, and we're going to say the definition. Please so, so. Actually, I'll say it first, and then you repeat it after me, okay? So, days, d hold on. <laughs> days, 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 masculine day. Days, days, masculine day. Let's try that again. All right. Days, days, masculine day. Days, days, masculine day. Faces, 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 feminine face. Faces, faces, feminine face. Feminine face. Feminine face. Feminine face. Feminine face. Feminine face. Race, race, feminine, thing, matter, affair, business. Race, race, feminine, thing, matter, affair, business. Space, spay, feminine, hope. Space, spay, feminine, hope. Good. Okay, turn your books over for a second. Flip the book over. Okay, raise your hand if you can. Well, actually. Okay, Luke, tell me what does. Facies, faciei mean? Face. Is it masculine or feminine? Feminine. Good job. What? Okay, Carly, uh -huh. space, spay means what? <laughs> Hope. Good. Feminine. Good job. Oh. Okay. Hi, I can do that. Is that the one that doesn't have the dot? And Emma. Wait. Wait. Fides, fidei. Oh, it is. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Fides. Oh, I know. Close. I know. Faith, oh. trust. Faith. Masculine or feminine? Feminine. Feminine without Now, without. let's talk about derivatives first, and then we're going to practice the endings one more time, and then we will be done, okay? So, look at our derivatives for dace, dae. The derivative is diary. So, you can flip your book back over. Diary! Okay? Yeah. Okay, so diary is a derivative. So, what is a diary? Something that you write your thoughts in what? that is very personal and you don't want anyone to know. Yeah, about. something you record like daily thoughts in. So that is a derivative. That's where we get the word <laughs> diary from D A C A. Okay, for facie spaciei face, the derivative is facial. So that's just anything that has to do with, with your face. Um, fide fidei, a derivative is fidelity. So what is that? fidelity just Trust. basically um, relates to faithfulness. So if somebody is faithful, okay, yeah. that would be faithfulness. Um, race, ray, e, our derivative is real. So real is, like if something is it's actual or genuine, real. the opposite of fake, right? Okay, and then space, space, e, hope, our derivative, <laughs> surprisingly, is despair. despair which so comes, so do you guys see? It's, yeah, the opposite of hope, or to be without hope, to lose hope, your despair, uh -oh. despairing. So space, space, you see where that word despair comes from, that, um, that What word. does um, real mean? Real, well, like actual. <laughs> 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 like, I'm pretty sure all of you know. So it's like the opposite of fake, it's genuine, it's actual. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Okay, and finally, last couple things to go over in your book on page 67, you guys see that at the top. So gender rule, our fifth gender rule, or our gender rule for the fifth declension, I should say, is 5DF. So what that means is most fifth declension nouns are feminine, okay? The fifth declension is small and has just a few nouns. A few of them are masculine, none of them are neuter. So most are feminine. Five D F is our gender rule for the fifth declension, and again, just making sure you pronounce all the vowels if they were consecutive in that word. So because the the stem and can end in the letter I, we might have that I D I, and we have to pronounce all of them. Okay, let's practice our endings one more time for the fifth declension. Okay. okay? So let's say them together, and then I'll see if you guys can study them for a minute, and then you can try saying them on your own, okay? So we've got ace, ae, a, m, a, ace, arum, abus, ace, abus. Do you think you have it already? Ace, a, a, m, a, a, Ace, Aram, Ebu, 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 
Ace, 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 ace. ace. Good job. Okay, do you guys want to try? Ace, A, A, and A. Ace, arrow, A, boost, Ace, A, boost. Can I try? Yeah. Ace, A, A, M, A. Yeah. Ace, M, M, M. That will wrap things up for today. So after our co-op lesson, my kids do have workbook activities that they have to do throughout the week. The student workbook is split into different sections per lesson. So usually I have them do just one to two sections a day to spread it out over the week. And we also have flashcards to practice and I will do some oral drill with them occasionally as well. Let me know if you have any questions at all in the comments. Like I said, this has been a really fun class for us to do with some friends at co-op. And I think this curriculum has been really easy to follow, especially since I did not know Latin prior to teaching it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content. I will see you next time.